Hello and welcome to another walkthrough by Commander Rogden from Rogden Gaming. We are currently on the Thieves Guild questline part 4. We are outside the Nightingale Hall, immediately after completing the quest Trinity Restored. As this quest was entirely story based, I did not feel that there were any elements that required a walkthrough. However, I will comment that the Nightingale Armor is apparently a leveled set, which maxes out at level 32. So if you are upset about receiving items that are not at their maximum value, you may wish to wait until then before starting this quest. The location at the start of our next quest, Blindsight, is Urkenthand. The closest fast travel location is Windhelm. Getting lost traveling in this direction should be near impossible, as it is completely straight. Once you reach this location, you'll want to dismount so that you can deal with the bandits camping up ahead. When you round this corner, you'll need to deal with a few bear traps. In this next room here, there is a chest guarded by two bandits. Make sure to take out the one that is standing before the one that is asleep. If you step on this pressure plate here, it will activate spears out of the wall, though one of them appears to be going in a bug direction. When you round the corner, do not forget to activate this lever before heading up this stairway. Someone there. If you have ranged attacks, you can kill the bandit chieftain well hidden on the bench. After you enter the Arcanics and deal with the bandits as well as the chest in the middle of the room, you'll want to trigger this bear trap before heading down the right hallway. After entering through this gate, you'll want to hug the right side to loot this chest at the far end. Deal with this patrolling dwarven sphere. It is highly recommended that you sneak through this area as if you are detected it will spawn additional enemies. To pass through this next area without getting lit on fire, you'll want to move outside of the range of these flame jets. Note that if you are not sneaking, additional enemies will spawn. Up along this wall is a chest that is easily missed, a few potions, as well as the way to your objective where you'll meet up with Carlia and Brynjolf. Brynjolf, we have to catch up to him before it's... We should tread carefully. I wouldn't be surprised if he's left behind. And one of those surprises is as soon as you open this door. Do not forget to open this gate to get at this treasure chest, some potions, and some ingots, before viewing a scene where Mercer runs around and kills everyone. Note that you may need to turn up your actor fade in order to see this. When you first enter this large area, you'll find a farmer patrolling up top. You may wish to get rid of him while he is here, so that he does not alert the others below. If you are feeling sneaky, you can activate this crossbow when this farmer is standing in front of the second house. Once you have eliminated the farmer, you'll want to head to the left and activate this lever. As there is a time limit, you may wish to be speedy as you run around to the lever on the other side. This will prompt the mechanisms that will open the gate. A word of caution when approaching the gate, do not do so along this straight path, as you will likely die. Instead, you may hop up on this ledge and work your way around. Once you are finished looting what you need to, Enter this next room, and if you are using ranged attacks, make your way up this ramp, as it will provide you with a vantage point to snipe many of these farmer. You may then head to the left, netting you a chest. After killing those Falmer, by whichever means is your favorite, and loot this Shaman's Key. Ensure that you avoid the numerous bear traps in this area.
and do not forget to leave without these scrolls of detect life, which will be important later. When you enter the next room, Brynjolf will provide you with the option of killing the centurion, or of avoiding it, though I recommend the third option, which is causing mayhem. As the battle is weighted in favor of the farmer, you may wish to assist the centurion. Once you have finished looting the centurion, you may continue up these stairs and activate this tripwire. If you favor melee, the enemies will patrol as follows. This guy between this hut and this corner, and this guy from these spiders to this hut. If you favor ranged, you can pick the enemies off from up here. Either way you choose to get rid of them, do not forget this chest before heading into the next area. To deal with the two Falmer below, activate this lever to set the trap, and turn it off when you are done. If you do not have the pressure plate perk in the next room, you may wish to avoid standing on any of these plates, as there will funnel flames out of each of their respective areas. Entering the next area, Brynjolf will give you the option of either avoiding the Falmer or killing them, as Falmer are blind and you should have enough muffle to give yourself 100%, avoiding them should be relatively easy. However, there are two treasures that you do not want to miss. The first in this hut here. The second is in the hut across from the first. If, however, your sneak is not high enough to do that, you can easily navigate around them and pass through this gate undetected. Regardless of how you get by that area, you'll want to take out these two farmer here before looting the chest up this platform. You'll encounter several additional enemies through this area, including two Chorus, as well as a chest on the left in this hut. If you wish to have a better vantage point as an archer or mage, you can travel along these pipes. And after taking out these two farmer and looting this chest, we will reach the final area. So prepare for a boss fight, and put those scrolls of detect life in your favorites bar, and save before you enter. Your answers to these questions are largely irrelevant, however, if Mercer falls into the water like he did right here, you should probably reload until he stands on the platform, as he will immediately detect you and start attacking. As soon as this sequence starts, I recommend going into hidden mode. If you have ranged attacks, you can kill him while he approaches you from the stairs, If he gets too close to you, you can hop off the edge and run around in a circle, as he will typically retreat back to his original starting point. If instead you favor melee attacks, I recommend using Chill Rend and a Life Detect Scroll in the other hand, as you can keep him paralyzed as long as you have charge. If you have the unrelenting force shout, a third way to kill him is to shout him off the edge. Either way you kill him, make sure that you loot his body because you will only have this one opportunity to do so. At this point, all you need to do is wait for the water to carry you up to this ledge, which was behind the statue. Stolen from the Twilight Sepulchre. Our access to the inner sanctum was removed. The only way to bring it back will be through the Pilgrim's Path. Carlia then informs you that you have one last task ahead of you, which is to return the key. She will also provide you with the Nightingale Bow, which is a leveled weapon. However, at this point you may choose to stop doing the Thieves Guild line quest, as once you return the key, you will no longer be able to use it. And the skeleton key, if you are not aware, never breaks, which means that you could use it to easily raise your lockpicking to 100. I, however, intend to return the key. 
and the location it sends us to is all across the map at the Twilight Sepulcher. The closest fast travel location being Falkreath, which we will be using the carriage to get to. You'll want to head northwest along the main road, take a left at the first pass, head right into the forest past Tusk Keep, and you'll soon find yourself at the Sepulchre. After you have spoken with the Nightingale Sentinel, ask him what you will face in the Pilgrim's Pass to reveal the location of Nistrum. When you first enter the next room, you will encounter a ghostly apparition on this staircase here, as well as a second in this room. Once you have eliminated the second ghostly sentinel, Come around to the back side of this table and activate a button to open a secret wall. As well, to the right of the stairs, there are shelves packed with many expensive potions before proceeding to face your next spirit. In the event you do not have the light foot perk, you can hop over that pressure plate. Activating it will send numerous arrows at your person. In the following room, you must stay within the darkness where there is this smoke as standing in the light will quickly drain you of your health. If you have a light spell, I recommend casting it as many of these trip wires can be difficult to see, and this artificial light will not harm you. If you have Whirlwind Sprint, you can skip a large portion of this area, as well as gain some extra loot. If not, you'll want to head around these stairs, and towards this door, following this murky path. For this next area, you want to pull these chains behind these sconces to open the secret door behind the statue. This next area has two different ways of solving. The first is to head through this heavily trapped area. The second is to head down this path and pick this door. In doing so, you may be required to fight two additional spirits though it will net you a trove of additional loot, including this lockpicking skillbook. Either route will lead you to the entrance to the next area. And finally, jump down when you reach this pit. After a short while, the floor will disappear and you will fall to where you need to place the key. The crescent moon represents the agent of shadow, the half moon for the agent of subterfuge, and the full moon for the agent of strife. This is Nocturnal's way of maintaining. If you ever feel the need to change your... Be warned that once you've chosen, you can't reselect for at least a day. After you have finished speaking with Nocturnal and Carlia, you'll be provided with the opportunity to choose one of three different daily powers. The Crescent Moon, which will allow you to turn invisible for 120 seconds when you sneak. The Half Moon, which will turn all creatures within a large area hostile to each other for 30 seconds or the full moon, which will drain 100 health points from any target. Standing even slightly close to these will activate them. However, as you can change them once a day, you do not need to be concerned if you make a mistake. Congratulations, you have completed the Thieves' Guild questline. This completes our walkthrough for the Thieves' Guild questline part 4. This is Commander Rogden. Thanks for watching.